Good morning, students. Myself Sumon Ghosh, and uh, from Camel Institute of Technology and Management. I will take your classes on PCME 301, that is thermodynamics. So, from today, I will start your thermodynamics classes. And today is the introductory class. So, let us start thermodynamics. So, thermodynamics is basically a very interesting subject. So, what is actually it is? Let us understand. Thermodynamics basically means it consists of two words. One is therm and that is dynamics. Therm, you know it related to heat and dynamics, you know that it related to motions. So, whatever the subject is basically deals with the motion of heat. So, it has been included in your syllabus and your subject the third semester. So, before going to the details of these courses, uh, let me tell you one thing that why should you learn thermodynamics? Okay. So, because thermodynamics is something that has been practicing from the ancient era. When human used to burn fires and utilize that fire for cooking. So it has been coming from the longer ages. Okay, so the system has been something interrupted. So let us continue with this thermodynamics. Okay, so as I was there in uh, why you should learn thermodynamics. Okay, so from your childhood, you know that uh, there is a two pins conservation principle, mass conservation principle, energy conservation principle. What is that? That energy neither be created nor be destroyed. Similarly, mass neither be created nor be destroyed. Now let us take one small example. If you see around, you will see that several cars and bikes are running on the road. How they are running? By utilizing the energy. Okay. Now, as I have told earlier that uh, energy neither be created nor be destroyed. So, energy is not being created. So, what is happening actually? So, you can see that in the cars, in the bikes, the chemical energy of petrol or diesel, whatever the fuel is, is being burned and it releases the heat and that heat is utilized in forms of mechanical energy which runs the bike or runs the car. That means you can see <coughs> that the energy is not being created or destroyed, it is transforming from one form to another. So, and you again know that this petrol and the diesel is depleting day by day and its lifetime is decreasing. It may be around 50 years more or 100 years more. Then what will do? Because as you know energy neither be created. Then how should we run the bike? How should we run the cars? So that is a different issue. So we cannot create the energy, but what we can do? The thing we can do is that we can utilize that energy properly. So let me give you one example. So the funda of running these bikes or diesel, just I have told that it converts the chemical energy of the fuel into the mechanical energy so that the bike can run and in between the processes that the chemical energy is burned and heat is released and that heat is utilized uh, to convert into mechanical energy and that mechanical energy runs the bikes. Now if we do the same thing and all these processes happens inside the engine that means we have a specific device named as engine and that engine do the job. 
but if we do the same thing just like uh, we have a pot and we are burning that same petrol but in the open air in the open air and we have made the system same thing Pist several pistons are there and several equipments are there but they are done in the open open air so does we get the similar kind of result that we what we expect from the engine it will never because the system has been changed so previously you can see we can get higher efficiencies or we can get higher output but in the latter case whenever we are doing in the open air we will not get that much of output or we can get zero output because the piston will not run so we are doing the same things we are using the same concept that means we are changing the energy the chemical energy to heat energy and then mechanical energy but in one cases we are getting desired output and in the other cases we are not getting the desired output that means in the other term we can say in the second case that means in the open air the energy is not being properly utilized okay so you can see the utilization of energy is a great much importance so if we cannot utilize the energy properly that means the energy will be wasted so if we do the same thing for petrol and diesel it will be a waste so its lifetime will be decreased so what we have to do we have to properly utilize that energy so if we can properly utilize the energy inside the petrol and diesel the lifespan of petrol and diesel this wall will increase because we cannot create it so for proper utilization of this energy we have to follow the some certain rules and that those rules are given by thermodynamics the basic laws of thermodynamics <clears throat> let me give you one example that you know that there are several processes which can have one directions and some processes which have both directions just like you can increase the temperature of a rod from 20 degree to 80 degree and at the same time by cooling it you can decrease the temperature from 80 degree to 20 degree so that the rod can restore to its previous position so you can see that this system this system the rod system can act once its temperature is increased and again its temperature is decreased so it is acting in the both way but if we do the same procedure instead of heating from outer resources if we if we send some electricity through the rod what will happen the resistance inside the rod will increase and it will releases the heat that means the electrical energy will converted into the heat energy but is the reverse is possible no if we cool the rod and if we connect it to the wires only wires then you will not get back the electricity which have already been produced by passing it so you can see this this rod is this process of changing the energy cannot be reversed so you can see some process is reversing some process is not reversing so how we will get it we will get it by the laws of thermodynamics so there is the importance of thermodynamics so now you can understand why we have to learn the thermodynamics because we have to properly utilize the energy so that the energy will not be waste okay chalo let us start with thermodynamics so before going to the thermodynamics the details of thermodynamics you have to know some certain terms okay so let us start with the terms so first term is system system means where we should do some work suppose i am writing in this uh, paper so now it is my system so where we should put our concentrations that is known as system suppose if we if there is some piece of 
piece of uh, idea in this paper and if we write something just like system system then it will be our system then it will be our system system basically means that where we should do some work or we should put our concentrations now what is surroundings so if we draw the same picture again that is system that is system so apart from this apart from this all the other things in this universe is termed as surroundings so what will be the surroundings apart from this system the outer all the portions in the universe is known as surroundings so if i am taking class in this uh, room then if we consider these things as a room as a system then the outer side of the room in the universe will be termed as the surroundings next comes system boundary system boundary means from where the system system is separated separated from surroundings system is separated from surroundings that is known as system boundary this boundary may be real may be real or it may be imaginary just like this so if let us give one example let us take one example so if we suppose now i am taking class in this room so this room is separated from the outer world by uh, the walls the outer world by the walls just like if this is a classroom if this is a classroom this classroom is separated from the outer world from these walls and these walls are real so we can say that this room is separated from the universe by means of walls but if we take these things as a system that means an area inside this paper if we take this portion where i am writing as a system then it will be surrounded from these surroundings by a imaginary wall it is not real it is imaginary so this system boundary can be real it can be imaginary so now i think you have a clear idea about system surroundings and system boundary now come to next thing the types of system the types of system so first system is open system or control volume system let me tell you one thing that this control volume is written that doesn't mean that the volume remains constant most of the cases the volume of the system remain constant but certain cases it may changes so this name not only implies that the volume remains constant okay so let us put our concentration on this open system or control volume system what is open system or control volume system so if we take this one is a system this one is a system so let us do the abbreviation as sys and this one is surroundings surroundings so the system is separated from the surroundings by this wall now we, you you know that energy energy and mass can transfer as as per the con, con, conservation principle it not be created not be destroyed but it can transfer from where to where from system to surroundings or surroundings to system through system boundary now in the case of open system in the case of open system both both energy and mass both energy and mass can transfer both energy can 
mass can transfer across the system boundary so the energy transfer is not equals to zero or the mass transfer is not equals to zero that means it only indicates both energy and mass can transfer through the system boundary next come to the next point that is a closed system or control mass system so what is a closed system and control mass system let us understand so if you take this one as a system this one as a system so if energy can transfer across the system boundary but mass cannot but mass cannot then we can say this system as a closed system or control mass system so how could you get an example so let us give one example so if we take this water bottle as a system now if we heat it if we heat it then the heat will transform from outside to inside or from surroundings to this system but this water is not going outside or it is not transferring from system to the surroundings it is inside the bottle so in this case we can say that energy is transferring from system to surroundings but mass cannot so it will be considered as control mass system and or closed system but if we open the cap but if you open the cap and we are heating we are heating this bottle and this water is going outside so we can say that both heat can transfer as well as mass can transfer so in that case it will be considered as open system okay. and the last one and the last one is isolated system so in that case in that case both energy both energy and mass cannot transfer across the system boundary both energy and mass cannot transfer across the system boundary or we can say the energy transfer is zero the net mass transfer is zero so there is no specific example of isolated system there is no specific example but you can consider if you want to visualize or you can want to feel what is actually isolated system is so you can consider as the water flux where uh, we put some hot uh, coffee or hot tea inside it and it remains hot for several uh, amount of times then you can consider this one as isolated system but it is not a specific example of isolated system so all this three things i have already explained that first is control volume system wow. then is con closed system or control mass system and last one is isolated system so these are the basic three types of i systems basic three types of system and i think i have explained using an example of water bottle okay now let us come to the next things the next thing is okay so now we have to uh, understand some definitions so first definition is property so already i have explained what is a system what is the surroundings types of systems and uh, boundary wall now i will explain about the property now what is a property so every system every system has some has some certain characteristics by which its physical condition can be described which is known as the property of the system 
property of the system for example if we take this room if we take the room where you are living right now as a system then that room has some certain pressure volume temperature okay this pressure volume temperature is known as the property of the system is known as the property of the system okay next definition is state when for a system these properties has some specific value then it is called the system is in a definite state for example if this pressure is specified just like pressure is 1 atm value is some x meter cube temperature is 27 degree centigrade then we can say this system is in a state of pressure 1 atm temperature 27 degree centigrade and volume x meter cube okay so we can say the system is in a state of pressure 1 atm temperature 27 degree centigrade and volume some meter cube next is path path means before going to the path we have another definition that is change of state change of state so as the name implies that a change of state means the state is changing suppose in your room the conditions are like this pressure one atmosphere temperature 27 centigrade and volume is x meter cube now if one or more properties changes in that room then it will be called as change of state suppose in your room you have put the air conditioning or ac on then what will happen the main function of ac is basically in this uh, in this hottest region is to reduce the temperature to some specific temperature just like because of this putting the ac the temperature has reduced to 17 degree that is a comfortable conditions but the other conditions remains fixed just like pressure is one atmosphere volume is x meter cube so you can see previously the system was in a state of this that one atmosphere temperature 27 degree centigrade volume x meter cube now because of the ac you have put it on the temperature has reduced to 70 degree centigrade but all the other properties remain same so you can say that one property has been changed then we can say the system is in the another state where the conditions are temperature 70 degree centigrade pressure one atmosphere volume x meter cube now system was previously at condition 1 and it has gone to condition 2 so this thing will be considered as change of state now next is path so what is a path now we will put these things only that is temperature has changed from 27 degree centigrade to 70 degree centigrade so now temperature was initially at 27 degree centigrade then it has gone to 70 degree centigrade that means the temperature has fall down now has it been fall down instantly no so it has some intermediate states so if we divide 
this change of state into infinite number of state just like this let me give you one example that initially the temperature was 27 degree centigrade so in the first conditions the temperature has fall down by the temperature of del t so we can say the temperature has gone down to this then again del dash t 26 degree centigrade then again t1 minus double dash t 25 25.5 degree centigrade and then finally it has reached to t2 that is 17 degree centigrade and t2 plus del t <coughs> is 17.5 degree centigrade so we can say that the state has been divided uh, uh, the state has been divided into by 5 degrees then the steps are 5 degrees so in initially it was 27 degree centigrade then it has gone to 26.5 then 26 and we can divide it by small portions also so if we divide the change of state into infinite number of states and if we draw a diagram like this so we will get infinite number of states from state 1 to state 2 so we will get infinite number of states infinite number of states so if we join all these states we will getting a line and this line is known as the path that means the succession of all the intermediate states when the system changes from one state to another state is known as path okay now when this path is completely specified when this path is completely completely specified is known as process so how could we get the feelings of this process so we will take the previous example again that is the temperature has reduced from 27 degree centigrade to 17 degree centigrade but you can see only one property has been changed but the other properties remains fixed what is the other property look at the pressure the pressure initially was 1 atm and finally it is 1 atm so there is no changes in the pressure so we can say the system has gone from state 1 to state 2 where temperature changes but the pressure is constant the pressure is constant that means the system has changes its states through a path where pressure is constant that means this condition is specified so th then that path will be considered as constant pressure path constant pressure process or isobaric process so you can see I am not terming as path it is as process because the pressure is constant it is being specified so this is the concept of process next is thermodynamic cycle what is a cycle thermodynamic cycle thermodynamic cycle means so as the name implies cycle means if we start from here and if we reach from there by doing some several processes so we have started from here and going through these paths we have reached again to one then it will be considered as cycle now what will be thermodynamic cycle thermodynamic cycle means if the initial state and final state are identical both are identical 
then it will be termed as thermodynamic cycle so let us take one example so we'll take the previous example again so these are the thermodynamic coordinates so initially the system was at state 1 where the pressure 1 atm temperature 27 degree centigrade so this is state 1 then because of the ac that you have switched on it has gone to the state 2 it has gone to state 2 where pressure 1 atm temperature 17 degree centigrade okay so it has gone over there now switch off the ac so if you switch off the ac then after some amount of time you will see that that your room has reached to the previous conditions because the heat has been released to the surroundings so it will go to the previous conditions so you can see that your rooms initially was at state 1 then you have switched on the AC switched on the AC and it has reached to state 2 now again you have switched off the AC switched off the AC and it has again reached to the initial conditions that is the state 1 so you can see it has been started from 1 2 it has gone to 2 then again from 2 to 1 so it has completed one cycle then it will be considered as thermodynamic cycle okay next is types of property so basically there are two types of property intensive property and extensive property what is intensive property intensive property means those property which are independent of mass and extensive properties are those properties which are dependent on mass okay. so let me give you one example what is the example of intensive property pressure pressure so right now the room pressure is 1 atm room pressure is 1 atm now if we put some loads in this room just like five people sir has entered into the room so the mass has been increased because initially i was only there it is one people now five people has entered that means the load has been increased but is there any changes in the pressure there will be no changes in the pressure so you can consider this pressure as intensive property now what is extensive property just like take this water bottle this water bottle so this water bottle right now has some volume so if we consider as per the nomenclature by the company it is one liter but right now it is not properly filled fully filled that means it has lesser mass it has lesser mass that means it has some lesser volume but if we fill the water the mass will increase so as well as the volume so you can see the volume of this bottle or inside the bottle or the water is dependent solely on mass in that case so you can say that volume is a extensive property the volume is the extensive property so with this i am ending this first lecture thank you